I got a new microphone. This is a Sony ECMB1M, those Sony names. And we are using this with a Sony A7S III. I also have an old microphone that has some of the similar features. It is this guy, and hold on, let's do the name. ECM-XYST1M is the name of this little microphone. I've had this one for a few years. The thing that these have in common is that they both have the ability to plug directly into the hot shoe of some Sony cameras, the A7S III being one of them. And what's really rad about that is that you don't end up with a cable hanging out the back of it that then plugs into the camera, which is always a nightmare because if the camera comes, the cable comes in plug plug just like a little bit and it kills all of your audio and you don't notice it, you lose everything. So this is a much more secure way of getting audio into the camera that sounds nice. So I love these hot shoe things, even if Sony charges a crazy premium for them. Um, so I was gonna make a video for myself just kind of uh, testing this out and trying to figure out how it sounds and how it works in different conditions and stuff and checking all the features. And then I also wanted to compare it to this and I figured how I'll just make a video and I'll share it with everybody. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you the little microphone here, the older microphone that I have. And I remember paying about $150 for this one. And I think, gosh, I don't even know what this would cost. I got this from the Sony Rewards Program from the points I earned with the A7S III purchase. So I'm really happy that this didn't cost me anything by notes, upwards of $200, $250, or something like that. They're really hard to get, too. They got sold out everywhere. But um, anyways, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about the uh, ECMXYST1M. <laughs> I have a note there. There's no way I have that memorized. The things that are cool about this microphone, like I said, is it has a hot shoe that just plugs straight into the um, hot shoe mount on the camera. And like I said, that eliminates a need for an additional cable being hooked into things. My understanding here though, is that this does not have a digital signal, but I don't understand how something that goes through a plug like that isn't digital, but I'm not an engineer, who knows. Other things that this microphone does, it's pretty basic. Um, it does this thing where you can have the microphones pointing forwards on it like this, or you can spread them apart like this to give the sound signature more space. So that's pretty much it. Aside from on one side, you've got a normal audio input and then a low cut. And the low cut is pretty cool if you're in a windy situation. Um, most of the time you can just fix that in post, but it does help a little bit. Cuts your frequency, your, what you're trying to record as well, but the rumbling that you would get from a, uh, a wind coming across the mic or something, it can, it can help with that. So that's the essential features that come with this. And you know what? I didn't even mention what I'm recording this on now. It's a video micro. Micro Pro? Micro? Video Micro? It's one of the little ones, the road ones. And it's a great microphone, I love it, it sounds great, but it has a cable, and that cable has bitten me in the ass more than once. Um, so let's move on to the feature breakdown really quick of the ECM B1M, and that one's a little easier to remember. This microphone does all sorts of crazy trickery because it does, um, it has a it has a digital connection into the camera and it's able to do processing and pick up things in different ways. You can see the top of it has got this array of microphones on the top and uh, instead of just like these two that you can manually switch apart like this, right? So it's able to do all this like spooky, like high tech stuff. And that's all controlled on this back panel. And you can see here the simple stuff, you can go between a digital and an analog signal between that. And then you've got a filter, which is off a low cut and I think a noise cut. So it'll cut out noisy environments and also cut out a low cut I'm assuming that low cut is similar to the low cut that is on this older uh, microphone that I've been using. I haven't tested this stuff yet though, so I don't know. Um, things I have tested a little bit is up here, you've got, this is the sound signature or the sound stage. So the microphone in this is, the camera is the bottom issue area, right? And then the microphone is able to pick up a area just in front of itself. You put it in the middle and it picks up an area that is more around the camera and then you put it in the very back one and it'll pick up a 360 degree angle like all the way around the microphone and this is cool because when i film with with katie who if you don't watch any of our other videos or on another channel um it's my wife we make videos uh travel videos and stuff like that so a lot of times one of us is holding the camera and 
the person in front of the camera is talking and the person behind the camera is talking and we're interacting with each other. But with a microphone like this, where the microphones are only pointed forwards, the person that's in front or be behind the camera has to kind of stick their head around and like uh, project their voice, right? But with this, we can just flip this switch down and then just talk and it should be able to pick us up. I'm also interested in just going out and filming some like, not ASMR, but like, environmental sounding things like going in the forest and seeing if I can get the sound of like streams and you know birds and things like that and I want to see how this picks it up because it'll be a 360 thing and I think it'll just maybe you don't have to have you're not only capturing what you're pointing at so that's that, that's the main feature that's exciting about this for us um this next switch down here is how do you pronounce this word attenuator 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 <laughs> It basically cuts the level of the signal that comes in. So you can see at the top is um, zero decibels is not doing any cut. And then you could cut it down 10 or 20 decibels. So if you were in like a concert situation or something, you could drop that to 20 and that might help like keep everything from like being too much for the microphone. Um, and then the other thing that it's got here down at the bottom is two things that are related to one another. We've got an auto which is uh, obvious. It just let the camera and the microphone figure everything out. Or you can set it to manual and you can dial in your level here. Um, auto is where I live. That's just what I need. So that's going to be probably what I'm going to end up doing almost all of the time. I'm not even sure if I'm going to test it now. I don't really care about being able to dial back the intensity of the input. So now that the uh, features are covered and all those things you could have probably just learned by looking at the um, product information from Sony, <laughs> I am going to start putting microphones on the camera and we're going to do some uh, kind of controlled test environment stuff where I'm standing in this room and I'm just talking to the camera. For reference, um, for distance, I will be standing about this far away from the camera during these during these tests. And I have kind of long arms. This is probably about, I'm, I'm like two foot, or it's two meters or six foot seven, right? So my arms are really long. So I'm saying, I'm gonna guesstimate this is like, I'm almost touching the microphone right now that's on top of the camera now that's recording. That's probably about three feet. This is where I'll be standing just for a natural distance or whatever. And I'm not going to do anything at all with the audio and post. I'm not going to uh, EQ it. I'm not going to change levels, nothing. It's going to be just as is. And I think that gives everybody the information that they need. Let's get onward to figuring out which one of these microphones sounds better. All right, this is a base level understanding of what we're working with. Right now you're hearing the onboard mics of the A7S III. I'm not going to cut back and forth with these a lot. I just want everybody to give like a, you know, this is what you're working with. If you don't have any microphone and you want to know, what level can I step up to from? You can, you know, get an idea of what this is. And just to give a little bit more conversation for this base level test, um, I will also be uh, talking about the dead cat situation and wind that uh, we can try to eliminate from using these mics out in public later. Onto the real mics. Both of these Sony microphones connect to the camera in the same way. Like I said, there's just a hot shoe connection on the bottom of the mic. You put it into the hot shoe on the camera slide it forward and then twist this. And now the mic is locked into place. That's all it takes, it's really nice. Once the hot shoe mic is plugged in, the menu system on the A7S III drops the ability to set your audio record level. Everything is done in the mic. On this one, you can do nothing. There's no way to adjust the audio level that I'm aware of. On the other one, like I showed before, it's got a switch for manual and then you can adjust it with a knob on the actual mic. So this makes the use of these mics super simple, especially if you don't want to do menu diving. We're now listening to the ECM XYT1M. <laughs> I'm going to get this memorized, I promise. And at the moment, the mics are pointing directly forward. We can see that that's how I've got them set up here. So they should have a really straight on to the person directly in front of the camera sound. If I move over to the side, and how can I make this so that you guys can understand? I'm gonna just do a selfie shot like this, I guess. So if I move all the way over to the side of the camera here, you're gonna notice a cut in my volume on my voice. And if I come all the way around in the back, you're probably gonna notice even more of a cut. And I'm gonna walk all the way back over in front of the microphone and keep talking. And that should give us a decent idea of what that all sounded like. I wonder how that all worked out. 
Um, so next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the microphones and I'm going to split them apart. And we're going to see if we get more of a separation of the soundstage. And um, hopefully this isn't going to be too loud for anybody watching this. But uh, if it is, then I'm sorry. Okay. So now we can see that the microphones are uh, split apart pretty wide. And I'm standing directly in front of them. I'm not sure if that means that it's not picking me up very much. I honestly never really tested this much. I just kept them straightforward and it always worked for my uses. But I'm going to do kind of the same thing that I did a minute ago and I'm going to walk around and see what about the soundstage. So I'll just move over like this a little bit and we'll see. I don't know if it if there's a left-right separation or not. I don't have another person here to talk over there to see if that is like a good thing or not. Um, another thing, I, uh, that'll be noisy. I was going to just move the, move the thing, but... And now I'll just walk around and we'll go over to here and see if the sound is staying any better or if it can pick me up any better from behind. We'll find out. I don't know. And I'll go back over into the front and I just keep talking and narrating myself, taking a step and taking a step. And hopefully that gives us enough audio that we're able to figure out whether or not that is a benefit at all with this specific microphone. The only other thing that I'm going to do right now, and for that I'm going to put these microphone uh, nodules back together. So pause for a moment here while I click them in place. So they're facing me once again. And I'm going to click over to this low cut. And just for a vocal, you can hear the difference type of thing. So... All right. Now the microphone is in low cut mode. And... I don't know, does it sound lower or like less low? It should. <laughs> there should be a little less like thunder in my voice. Like not gonna be quite as, uh, you know, sexy. <laughs> now I think that's kind of a baseline good audio sample for this particular microphone. I'm gonna switch over to the big boy here and we'll see what this does in terms of all of those features. Okay, we've got the ECM B1M saddled up and ready to ride. And I just wanted to show what the menu system looks like on the A7S III for this. It is almost exactly the same as the other microphone, except you can see here the shoe audio set is now set to 48 kilohertz, 16 bit, two channel. And that's because that I have the digital aspect flipped on. If I flip that to analog, which I'm gonna do right now, you can see that goes away. We are now hearing the ECM BM1, and like I said, I'm standing about the same distance that I was standing earlier, haven't changed anything in that regard. And at the moment, the microphone soundstage is set to be pointed straight at me. It's on digital, and it does not have any noise reduction, and the levels are on auto, and the level cut is just at zero, so there's nothing special happening. This is as standard as the microphone comes. And I'm going to do the same thing that I did last time where I walk around the camera and we see what the sound of my voice is as the sound stage changes in what direction I'm facing. So I'm going to just walk over to the side and I think probably okay here, but as I come over to directly next to the camera, I expect it to start to cut out. So I'm standing directly next to the camera, same about arm's length away from it. And I will scoop around to the back here and I anticipate that we are getting a lot less sound. I'm standing still about the same distance from it. I'm going to walk forward now to the microphone just to see how this sounds when you're standing right up on it, like if you were holding it and filming somebody else and trying to talk. And now I'm going to back away and scoot back over to the side and keep narrating everything I do so we have a decent idea of what the sound sounds like. And I'm also going to try to not walk really heavy <laughs> because it will shake through the tripod. <laughs> All right, so the one adjustment that I'm gonna make now is I am going to flip the sound stage on this microphone so that it is a wider sound stage and we'll see if we get further coverage on the sides. Um, I gotta come back here actually and look at this. So I am flipping it now. Okay, so the sound stage should be a little bit wider. We're gonna do the same thing where I just walk around the camera and we will see at what point my voice cuts out and stops, starts to become unusable. Over to the side here, and I'm expecting it to be a little bit better sounding. Uh, I'm standing exactly to the side of the microphone now, and I suspect that it's still gonna sound pretty bright and crispy. 
I'm gonna come all the way around to the back here and I think this is going to sound a little more dead. Again, I am the same distance here. Sorry if this cameraing that I'm doing with the, with, the, with the selfie cam isn't really good. I'm doing my best. And um, I'm going to walk up to the back of the microphone and keep talking, hopefully at the same level, and we'll see how dead the sound is here. And I'll step back away and slide back over to the side and slide back over to the front. And we will see how that all sounds. And from this point, I'm going to make that last change and I'm going to make the sound stage 360 degrees. So I'm just going to go behind it and no spoilers. We'll get to it. Um, so it's now flipped. And I don't know if this is going to make this sound any different or if it's just an additional like range of sound that we're going to get as far as like, you know, the directions that it's going to come from. So once again to the side and I will keep talking as I walk around to the side of this and I will put my arm out and like I have uh, shown before, that is about the same distance. I don't know how wide this shot is. Maybe you can see me in that. I don't know. So this is what it sounds like directly to the side and I'm going to keep walking around the back of the camera and I suspect that this is going to sound the same as it sounded when I was standing in front of it or very close to. So this would be able to, I can't really get because of my couch, right? But this would be able to get the exact same level of sound all of the way around the microphone. That's this thing's special little trick. So I'm going to just walk all the way over to the side again and, oh, you know what? I didn't walk up to the back. So I'm gonna walk up to the back and I wonder if it's gonna get too loud. So the person holding the camera is going to have to lower their voice. So I'm gonna keep talking at the same level that I was talking before and then I'll lower my voice as well and I will talk a little bit quieter since I'm standing closer to the microphone and you would suspect that the person in front of the microphone wouldn't be standing this close. So I'll back up again and I will get back to my normal speaking volume and I'll come back over to the side and I will go back to the front. And my hope and dream is that that all sounded basically fairly even no matter where I was standing. Uh, Gonna take a cut here and we're gonna think about what we're gonna do for the noise just a second or the noise reduction thing yeah okay there's our settings i've got the noise cut on and i have got the um microphone pointed directly to the front so that's what we're recording with right now so you may not be able to hear me super well but i come over here and I don't, it's not a noisy environment but mostly does my voice sound strange i will go outside and record like next to a, a road or something and we'll see what this sounds like with noise reduction and if it makes a difference from road noise and stuff. I'm not sure what kind of noise it can cut. Um, I'm then going to also come back here and let's flip this to the low cut. These little switches are really fiddly. Okay, so now we've got the low cut and does it sound different? Does my voice sound lower in the same way that it did when we did a low cut here? I don't know, we're gonna find out. And um, yeah, that, the one thing about these little switches is, why am I holding this like this? <laughs> is that the, the, if it's only got two positions, it's easy, click, 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 right? But if it's got that third position, that can be kind of a pain to adjust, right? So um, as far as the usability thing goes, the noise cut and the soundstage things are kind of, it's just fiddly, it's a little bit fiddly. Um, the only other thing I was curious about, let me flip between the digital and the analog and see what that sounds like. So I'm gonna go back here. And see, does that sound any different at all? Um, I can see on the screen, it does change a little bit of the information. I think you can't flip that analog and digital while it's on. <laughs> all right, we all learned something together there. Uh, you can't flip that analog digital thing without <laughs> losing your audio. I, don't, I, I didn't check, but the meters all died. So I suspect that it, when I flip that switch, you didn't get any audio. So we'll find out what happened when I check out the, the, the recordings. Um, the other thing I was curious about is we are now in analog, like uh, I didn't mention, but that's where we are. And I wanted to know if this sounded any different than the digital, so you could compare that to the previous sounding stuff and see if it sounds any different. We're back to the noise cut being off, so there's nothing going on in that particular avenue, and the soundstage is pointing straight at me. 
So I wanted to open the soundstage up and see if the soundstage stuff even works when it's not in digital mode. So let's get this guy going again and we will slide back around over to the back and we'll flip the soundstage. So like I said, it is currently facing forwards and now it should be in 360 mode. Does it sound any different at all? Or is it sounding exactly the same because that feature just doesn't work in the analog mode? I have absolutely no idea. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip that back and come back around over here. And the other features that we can check in analog mode don't require me walking around it, but let's just see if analog mode allows the noise filters. So that should be the noise filter mode. And how does that sound with analog mode? And I think the reason that this analog digital thing, I don't think all Sony cameras support the analog, or I'm sorry, the digital aspect. I think only the newer ones do. We have an older Sony camera it's like one of these little pocket camera things that has a hot shoe on it. And that's why we had this microphone actually is because it worked with it and it was awesome. But um, I don't think that that specific camera even supports the digital mode. So I think that's why there's a switch. So, okay, we're still in analog mode and I'm gonna switch it to low cut. I have to look. Okay, and now we're in low cut mode. Does it sound any different or is it the same? I don't have any idea. You know before I do. Well, I'll know before you do. It's a complicated math problem. All right, and I'm gonna throw it back into um, digital mode momentarily. Okay, we are in digital mode, and of course we are still on the ECM B1M, and I don't know why I'm saying that because I'll just write it on the screen so everybody knows where we're at. And I am going to play with the auto level thing. So in order to do that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it in 360 soundscape so that I can stand behind the camera and actually manipulate things and we'll play with the levels on that and just see what it does. I haven't even played with it at all. So I'm gonna, uh, I'm going to do this. I'm gonna bring this with me. This is a <laughs> quite a production. So I'm gonna go behind the camera and all right, so you should be able to hear me much better now since that has been switched. And um, I think the first thing I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna say check out this uh, noise level cut. And again, this isn't something that I'm gonna be something uh, using very much, but I figured why not, we'll just try it. So we're at zero decibels right now. I suspect that when I click this down into 10, again, steadily switches. We now have a lot less of volume, but that's just a guess. So the meters don't look like they changed it at all. Maybe nothing works when you change it live. Who knows? All right, and now I'm gonna change it to 20 and see if things got quieter. Oh, things got a lot quieter on the meters. I can see that. Okay, so we're gonna go from 20 back up to zero. And we should be able to see, okay, yeah, definitely making a change. I can see it like on the meters down there on the screen. And the other things that we wanted to play with here is sense that you should be able to hear me pretty clearly because we've got the 360 sound stage here going. I am going to um, flip over. Sorry about the autofocus on the camera, by the way. Like this is just, I'm, I'm really doing a lot here. Um, I'm, I'm, no, I'm no tech reviewer. <laughs> so the next thing I want to do is I'm going to flip the audio levels to manual and just kind of see how things work. So we're in manual mode now. And it looks like it is about the same as where we were at before. And I'm gonna cut the volume back by turning this little knob and we will watch the metering go down. It was really quiet. Super, 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 super quiet. Okay, so I think five is about where the camera's internal audio leveling wants to put things. So I bet as I turn this up, I'm going to start to peek out. So let's just kind of do a crank and watch those meters. Yeah, hello, 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 hello. It looks like it's not letting it actually peek out, which is kind of a good thing. I'm gonna turn that back down in case it's ruining everybody's ears. Um, I, visually, I didn't get like red lines, so that's a good thing. Um, I don't know, it's not something that I'm gonna probably be using a whole lot in my life. And um, the other things that I'm going to do, and I'm probably not gonna do them tonight, because it is rainy and cold and dark, but I am going to take this outside and I'm gonna take both of these with us and I'm going to talk about wind a little bit with dead cats. I could do the wind in here with a fan, couldn't I? Dag, maybe we'll do that. 
then I can actually control the wind and um, show some real world usage with the audio noise cuts and things like that. And the one thing that I can talk about already that I think sort of sucks about these is you can see the way that this, it's like a shock mount that they put on the bottom. You see how it moves around? When you're walking sometimes, this thing can bounce around, right? So you can end up in a situation where you're hearing these bonk noises, like when you're hand holding the camera and carrying it and like talking to yourself and blah, 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 and doing all the things, but it'll bottom out basically. And you can, it, it becomes audible in the mic. So like, I'm gonna grab the mic right now and like, you'll be able to hear what I'm talking about. Hold on. <laughs> Maybe. It's kind of awkward to grab. I mean, I've heard it when I'm walking. But maybe you can hear like a gunk, 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 gunk noise. Like that happens when you're walking sometimes. This is the only complaint I have with this mic really is that they've, they've done that. And this one appears to have exactly the same, um, the same shock mount on it. So that's just another little note to take into account. Um, it's nowhere near as, I feel like these, the shock mounts on this road are like better because it's actually kind of like free floating and it doesn't, you know what I mean? Like it just seems like, it looks goofy, but it, it's, it's a better system than what Sony's come up with. Um, but I'll still take it for not having to have a mic. Um, let me see if I can set up a fan and we will do some wind tests here. It's gonna get cold in here, y'all. All right, I got me a fan. <laughs> you know what I've noticed? There's something on the lens. Hope that hasn't been annoying for a while. Boy, is it still okay? We are back on the Rode microphone here. And um, the thing that the Rode microphone has that none of the other microphone has is a, an amazing dead cat. This thing is incredible for just like going outside and shooting videos and not having to worry about audio. This, um, this one's a little beat up. It's a little old at this point. I've had it for, I don't know, four or five years, but still it does an amazing job and in some super, super, super windy conditions. And this has always done a really good job, even though it doesn't have a low cut on it, which the other two do have. So just for a uh, some science, science here, I'm gonna go ahead and just turn the fan on and I'm gonna turn it on uh, strong. And as you can see, it is right into the camera and we're gonna see what this sounds like with, um, with this going and I will continue talking while it happens. All right, so. different levels of angles and all that kind of thing. So I'm gonna do the exact same thing once I put this on, but I'm going to pause this so that you don't have to deal with listening to that process happen. Okay, we've got the wind muff up on there, right? The dead cat. And I'm gonna do the same process here where I turn on the fan and we show just how good that dead cat is. I think, well, maybe I'm crazy, but it's it seems like it's been really good in the past. So um, I'm gonna turn this on. And again, I'm going to, how's the wind go? I can actually see it's moving. <laughs> Look at this. Because of the wind, it's wiggling. <laughs> you can see it like flopping around up there. All right. So that's wind basically going directly into the mic. And like I did before, I'm gonna take and move the fan around just to kind of simulate wind coming from different angles and different directions and pointing up to the side and up from this over there and really really close and over here and of course some of this is going to be engine noise from the fan that i mean that's not happening when you're outside right but really what we're trying to eliminate is the thunderous sounds of uh the wind right so that the you can still hear what's being what's being said all right let's switch over to one of the sony's we are now on the ECM XYST1M, the older Sony microphone. And we do not have a low cut, or I had to grab something, my bad. <laughs> we don't have a low cut, that's off, and we don't have a dead cat. And um, I can't do a exact from the factory test with this microphone because I no longer have the dead cat that it came with. And the reason that I don't have the dead cat that it came with is because it turned into this matted, knotted gnarliness and it became ineffective. So we stopped using it a long time ago in its original state, but we took it and you can see it is still existing inside of this. So we still had the shape and this little rubber band to hold it on. 
Um, and then we went to a fabric store, got a piece of fabric and put this on top. And this is what has been used as our our dead cat, our wind muff or whatever to cut wind so that it still works pretty good. And this works all right, but it works nowhere near as good as the Rode one. This one has got foam inside. It's got this rubber thing to make it all nice. And the hair that they put onto it, the dead cat is just wonderful. Like we couldn't manufacture something as good as what Rode has come up with, but this is passable. It's okay. And you'll see the difference here as we do a little bit of a test. Um, so I am going to turn on the fan and first thing I'm gonna do is give you some silence. And then we're gonna turn on the fan and I can I bet I can see in the metering it's gonna be really loud. So here's the fan. And I'm sure that's all you needed to hear to know that that's terrible. I'm gonna flip on the low cut and do the same thing. All right, low cut is now on. So my voice should be a little bit cut. Fan full power is on. probably terrible. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slip the dead cat on and flip it back to normal. So I'm gonna kill the low cut. We're back to normal, no low cut is happening. And I'm going to slide the dead cat on. Pardon the sounds. Okay, so now we have got, um, we've got the dead cat on and it just doesn't, it just, it just, it just looks ridiculous. <laughs> like, like this is just really, really silly looking. You walk around with this thing and people are looking at you like, yo, why Donald Trump on your camera? You know what I'm saying? So anyways, um, I'm going to go ahead and low cut off, turn on the fan and uh, just, just normal and we'll see what we get. I can already see on the metering that it's a little less intense, but it's still noisy. And I'm gonna take this and throw it over to the side bring it around, kind of up, over to the side a bit. All right, and I'm just gonna leave this on. I'm gonna flip the low cut on. Okay, the low cut is now on on the mic. It looks like it has cut a lot of the wind out based on the metering, but it's hard to tell with those little lines. You know, maybe it's done nothing. All right, and we're gonna come over here and we're gonna go over there. How's the sound? I have personally never been quite as impressed with this solution as I have with the road, but what you're gonna do, this doesn't have a cable, that's much better in my world. All right, let's flip over to the other camera, or <laughs> camera, the other microphone and do the other thing. Oh, you know what I just remembered? This microphone does have a thing on the side. It has a USB plug. Like, see that guy? How about that? I guess it's for firmware updates because I don't think it does anything. I tried to figure it out on Sony's webpage and on their manuals, but their documentation is garbage. So, uh, who knows? Okay, uh, other mic. This is the second time I've actually filmed this. And the first time I filmed it, I had the uh, microphone that's up on the top right now, which is the newest microphone with all the 360 capabilities, the ECM B1M. And um, I had it in, <laughs> I had it in manual leveling mode. I hadn't switched it back and I just, I just didn't notice. <clears throat> that won't ever happen in real life, don't worry about that. <laughs> and uh, it didn't give it, uh, to me, I wanted an auto mode for the wind stuff because the camera can do trickery and stuff to help it cut things and yada, 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 yada. Um, so at the moment it is in, let me double check. It is now in no filters and it is in auto mode and is it, in, it, it is in digital. So everything is good to go. We're gonna throw some wind at it and um, I'm gonna be a little faster because I watched back some of this footage and I realized the chaos of the no wind filters at all on those microphones is just dramatic. So I'm gonna do the first test just pretty quickly here and we'll see what happens. But I do, based on what I just heard, think that this one might do a little bit better, even with no wind protection. I think you can still hear my voice. It sounds like crap probably, but I think it's not in complete trash. So I'm gonna go over to the side and do the thing up over here. And that's enough. Okay, 
So let me then throw the noise filter on, the noise cut. All right, all I change is noise cut. We're on auto, digital, all the other things, and we'll do this and see what we get. Okay, so I don't have any idea really if this is gonna help anymore. I think the main help is gonna be the dead cat. Um, but this gives us an idea on what we're working with. And this time I'm gonna do a low cut. Them fiddly switches. Okay, so now we're on low cut, nothing else was changed. And how does this sound with wind blowing straight into it? Can you still understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? Okay, and that should be quite sufficient. Okay, so there's the three modes that we've got, and uh, now I'm gonna throw the dead cat on, and I found out last time that I filmed this, it's kind of hard to get on, so I'm gonna kill the video, and then we'll be back in just a second. And we're back with a dead cat on top. The dead cats that the Sony makes, they just, they're not the road dead cat. <laughs> they just don't have that robustness. Like it doesn't have the extra foam and the plastic on the inside. And I hope that I didn't say this in the cut that you kept that last time from the edit. So uh, when you have to film things twice, you can't remember when you said things. That's what I'm going through right now. But anyways, if I'm being redundant, I apologize. But it's just these Sony ones, man, they just don't feel like they're going to last as long. They don't feel like as protective from wind and stuff. So let's just hope that this microphone's digital trickery can help it. Um, right now we are no noise filters, auto mode, and digital. And the sound stage is facing me but I suspect that things are better now. Like you should be able to hear me still. It should be functional. And I'm going to go ahead and put this up over on both sides and keep talking so that we can get a reasonable guesstimation on what this all sounds like. All right. And now I'm gonna switch it to noise cut, the NC. I think that's what that stands for, NC, noise cut. I don't know. Okay, so now we're on NC mode, and I have no idea if it sounds any different or if this would help with wind at all, but my suspicion is that the low cut will do the best. Alrighty, so that gives us a sample of some wind. And then the last mode is the low cut. Fiddly switches, okay. All right, we are in low cut mode. My voice probably doesn't sound as sexy. There we go. <clears throat> coming at you all right and that is what we sound like when we have low cut on and hopefully this is the best ever sound and it doesn't sound windy and everything sounds great <laughs> but you know <laughs> who the hell knows okay so that's what we get with the low cut when we have the fan blowing straight into it and um, I'm not going to do it tonight, but I will take this outside with the two Sony mics and kind of do a little bit of real world example, maybe stand by some traffic and see if the noise cut helps this microphone at all. I don't know, we'll find out. Uh, I'm gonna have to do that another day though, so I'll be probably wearing a different shirt next time you see me. We're gonna do some noise tests here. This is the older Sony microphone that I can't remember the name of. It's hard to come up with a place that's got a consistent like noise level. I can't think of anything but this is a road and this is just going to kind of be a test of what that road noise sounds like on a mic with no noise control i don't know if this is doing anything or if it's even remotely what they're supposed to be testing with a noise control or whatever but we'll uh, see what happens when we plug in the other mic and flip that switch all right we're now on the new mic and um that motorbike's kind of noisy. Like, I can't control what comes by, you know what I mean? But right now we've got no noise cancellation or anything going on at all. And this is kind of the sound that I've got going with the road noise behind me. And it looks like there's less cars this time, but whatever. I don't know what to do about that. So I'm going to flip the switch now. And now there's no cars coming, so it's real quiet. Uh, this is noise cancellation on, and there will be a bunch of cars coming here. And I don't know, does that, is this the kind of noise it cancels? I'm really not sure. At this point, I'm just talking so that we can continue to hear if things are canceled and you can still hear my voice better, maybe. I'm not any idea. Just, you know, it's nice outside. Like, you know, fall is nice. <laughs> here come a whole bunch of cars here. 
So I don't know if this will cancel out traffic noise or whatever. Um, I would like to go into like restaurants or something where there's talking and everything going on, but it's sort of weird right now, like COVID times and stuff, to see if it like cuts out like, you know, the sounds of like restaurants, you know, like maybe a little bit of radio sound or whatever, and then like people talking and murmuring in the background. Maybe it's good for that. Um, I'm not sure if this noise test is really gonna be that scientific or good. <laughs> All right, here's some extreme noise. There's some construction going on behind me and that jackhammer is happening. I don't think this is gonna work much, but let's try the noise cut. Noise cut is now on and sound any better? Is it like tuning into my voice more or like what's, what's happening? You know what I mean? So we'll see, that's extreme. You would never find the situation. <laughs> There's another noisy construction situation. It's a lot further away from me right now. And I figured this is a consistent sound, so maybe it'll be a more realistic thing. You might film in a place where you had something in the background like that. Like, not where I was before, up against the jackhammer. That's a little further back. That's like back where that big building is. And right now, no noise cut, but... Now we have noise cut. Does it sound any different? Does NC stand for noise cut? I'm gonna feel real dumb if it doesn't. Anyway, this is the NC mode. And I don't know if it's gonna sound better or worse, and we'll find out later. And like as usual, you already know. Okay, this has got some general people murmuring around me and stuff. There's no like loud noises or anything. It's just kind of, you know, crowds of people chit-chatting. And I'm going to uh, flip on the noise cancellation now. Can't see y'all. <laughs> All right, we're canceling noise now. And I don't know if that sounds any different. It's like a little bit of music playing in the background. Kind of gives some different directions. Okay, and that is what it would sound like in this type of situation, which personally, I don't think I'd want to cut the audio on at all. Like you kind of want this environmental sound, right? Okay, this time I've got noise cancellation is off, but I've got the 360 sound to pick up even more of the environment. So, as I turn, it should, I assume, sound pretty much the same. And I was just curious how the, that, the 360 stuff is really interesting to me. Add more noise. <laughs> so what if we use this and the noise cancellation? Okay, so now we've got the 360 with noise cancellation on. And I'll do the same kind of turn. And we'll see what we get. Why you'd want to have the 360 and then cancel the noise? I guess if two people were talking got each out of the camera, I guess that makes sense. <laughs> Okay, we got no noise cut and we've got the um, sound stage facing directly towards me. Kind of wanted to test walking here and seeing if I could get the mic, the bottom out. Like, I'm gonna walk kind of like derpy derpy derp. Are we hearing clanking or is it all right? This one actually, maybe this, maybe the, maybe this one feels a little firmer than the other microphone did. But I mean, obviously this isn't great video, but sometimes you end up, you know, clanking around a bit. So I'm gonna shake it. Like, are we getting any noise in the mic from just this <laughs> quite annoying motion? Um, normally I would try my hardest to keep it like, this is the most shaky that I would really want this to ever be. Like walking, I try to hold my arm as steady as I can without doing like the, the super smooth walk. <laughs> so just kind of a test of the hot shoe bottoming, bottoming out and if it's going clunk 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 when I'm doing it, you know, sort of an exaggerated motion. This is the old mic and I'm going to do the same thing, kind of like walk and I'm going to shake it. Yeah, you can feel it bonking around. I'm going to bet you that you can't hear it in the other mic, in the newer mic. And it could just be that this is older now and it's just come, become loose. I've had this mic for, I don't know, five or six years. So maybe it's redesigned, maybe it's just older, maybe the way that the thing is designed has more weight on it or something so that it, you know, moves around more. 
or maybe it's because of that big old heavy <laughs> Trump looking dead cat that I have strapped onto it that I'm noticing this from. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna kind of be aggressive. Yeah, I mean, I can, I think I can feel a clinking in my hand. So maybe the new mic is just gonna be better for me, but it's hard to know if it's because it's old and new, old versus new here, or if its design is different, who knows. In the name of science, I have taken the dead cat off, so there might be a little breeze, because it's a little breezy out here. And I'm trying the same thing, and it feels like it's bonking around less, maybe? I don't know, I can really see it now, and it doesn't look like it's about aiming out. <laughs> this is a weird test. Okay, this is the end of my uh, my microphone test. I think this gives me all the data I need to start making intelligent decisions on what settings to use in this new mic in certain situations and things like that. I'm looking forward to going back and analyzing everything that I've recorded. And if you've made it to the end of this, like, probably very long video at this point, and you are not interested in these mics at all, but you still watch, the well, then pat on the back. I don't know why you watched. <laughs> but if uh, you are interested in these mics and these helped you out a bit, I'm glad to have assisted you to some degree. I do think that it's a possibility that Sony is going to be replacing these microphones in their lineup. I've just heard rumblings about that on like Sony Alpha rumors and stuff. So maybe this is all outdated at this point, but I needed to record all this anyways to kind of figure out like how this mic was going to perform in different situations. And if it was worth keeping, because I've considered if it's not going to be an upgrade at all, why not just sell it? You know what I mean? Because I got it for free basically through the Sony rewards program. So anyway, that's uh, that's it. This is the uh, this is the sky tree. It's kind of cool looking, right? And if anybody is curious about the current recording settings, it's just on directional, digital, no noise cuts or anything, pointed right at my face. Uh, yeah, have a good one, everyone.